This is my project bin, the series where I go over all of my model railroading projects that take place off camera or just didn't make it into a video for whatever reason. And to start, we have none other than my actual physical project bin. I've got several of these, which is where the name of this series came from. And this is the actual bin I keep all my stuff in. And the update here is that this is actually a new bin. For about two years, and even before that, all of my projects were in cardboard boxes. And now I've got some of these actual bins, and all of my main upcoming projects are all stored in one of these. So it'll make my process of going through projects much easier, much cleaner, and save me a whole bunch of space. Next up, I have a little bit of new rolling stock, which is this Southern Pacific coach. I have some of these that are really similar, and I want to be building a train of more of these. A lot of my older cars were not that high of quality, so I've been getting rid of those. And I've been trying to replace them with nicer cars that are brand new, mostly Walther's mainline. These are going to go behind my brass PAs and some of my other regular SP diesels. So I just wanted to have a nicer consist, get rid of some old cars, and just have a nicer looking train in general. And there's not one of these, but two. And I believe this pair was something like $75, which I spent basically from selling off some of my other cars from this train. So I got rid of some, and I went back into getting some brand new rolling stock, which is always much fun. Next up, we have a fairly nice locomotive that I got for free, which is this Bachman Niagara. However, it's got the typical Bachman issue of cracked gears. So my hope is going to be to restore this thing on camera, because in addition to this engine, I went online and I bought some replacement gears. So we're going to see if these things work at all. Hopefully I can replace these because the motor on this thing runs really well, and it's a really nice looking engine, and I have been told by the person who gave it to me that this was an engine that they ran at the club I'm part of well before they had DCC, and it served them quite well until they put it away and the gears cracked. So hopefully I can get this thing running again with some new gears in an upcoming video, and it'll be a nice fun engine that maybe I can even stick some DCC into. Next up, I have another piece of rolling stock that I bought brand new, and I've actually been using quite a bit, this Walther's Proto Caboose. I'll take this thing out. I've actually got one of my track cleaners on it because I was running it just the other day. I don't really like this packaging all that much. I know it's not the best way to open it, but that's the easiest way. I'll take this little thing off. These are just the track cleaners I use that I need to order some more of soon. But this is a really nice looking caboose. I believe the thing was $35 plus shipping. I needed a decent B&O caboose to go with my new FA and FB, and this seemed like a really good fit. So this is going to be on my consist from now on. I will probably end up weathering this car in the near future, but it's really nice. My only complaint is that it has quite a big lack of underbody detailing which for a car this nice is kinda just disappointing. Next up, I've got two more kits that I built recently. These are both some of the branch line ones from that lot that I got quite some time ago. The first of which is this B&O car, and if you can tell, it's got a few little defects, and that's been my biggest problem with these branch line kits, is these stirrups. I actually went and bought new stirrups, I just haven't had the time to replace the ones on this car yet. I really do not like the plastic stirrups these and the Inner Mountain kits come with because they just want to break off and it's not fun to deal with. It, uh, they want to break when you take them out of the plastic, when you try and put them in the car, and even when you just bump them gently. So those need to be replaced at some point soon. And then on the other car, I've already done this, but this is the Milwaukee car that I have built. It's a pretty nice looking car. I like it, but at some point these will probably replace with some nicer, higher quality cars. And for now, they're just going to be replacing some of my blue box 50 foots to at least somewhat up the quality of my train, since these were free cars that are pretty nice. Next up, I have a really big long-term project that I've just completed, which is this, the Aristocraft 422. If you've seen in some past videos, I got it running, but then the motor just decided to up and quit. So I went out and I tried buying it some new ones that would fit, and I finally found one in a worm gear combination that works pretty well. So this thing actually runs again. I had to change the wiring somewhat, so it actually picks up some power from this rear truck here, and rear tender and all that. So at some point I do want to try and put DCC in this engine, which I believe should be possible, but that'll be a project for another time. The only concerns about that that I really have are fitting a decoder and a keep alive in here, because there's not a whole bunch of space or a whole bunch of circulation. I did have to, again, wire the tender from, yeah, wire the tender up to the engine permanently. So I actually have a lot of leeway so I can fit it in the box, as you saw, which I plan on keeping and just being very cautious of. And I've also went in and installed a traction tire on this axle to provide this thing with enough power to actually pull some cars. 
because beforehand it was struggling to even move itself, and now it can actually pull a fairly decent train. So once I go through the rest of everything here, I will show you this thing running again. Next up, I have an entire new train to go over. The backstory behind this is I traded a few engines away to another friend who did not need these, and I ended up with this full set. I don't know if I'll keep this thing around long term, but I'll go over everything. First up is what I believe to be a model power car. A lot of these have upgraded trucks and all that. Some of these couplers and stuff still need work, but for the most part, this consist all works together. This one's a fairly decent car. These are all PRR. Next up is a Riverasi PRR car. This one, again, has upgraded trucks. It's kind of light, but this thing does do its job perfectly fine. Next up, we have a Concours Riverasi car, again with a truck upgrade and some other interesting modifications done to it. This one has perfectly fine couplers and all that. A lot of these cars are really different in height, so they kind of look odd together, but they do work. Next up, we have this Riverasi Diner car. Some of these couplers, again, might need a little bit of work, but these cars, for the little bit I've tested them out, work perfectly fine. And then this coach is going to need a little bit more work to it. It's a pretty nice car. Again, it's a River Rossi, but again, I don't know if I'm keeping these. So these might just be temporary, or I might be building a PRR consist. Who knows? And to go with them, I also got an engine, which is this MDC 460. This thing actually has DCC and has been upgraded and all that. It's a pretty slow runner, but it does indeed run. So now I've got another DCC steamer, and at some point in the near future, I'll probably have a video of this thing pulling this consist. Next up, I have a basic rundown of a few parts I bought, one of which is this decoder wire. I've been doing a lot of DCC installations, and I decided I needed some good decoder wire, so I bought this. I'm also really low on Lebel 106, so I just ordered a whole bunch more of that. So in the near future, I should get a lot more of that in. I've also got some Katie boxes and centering springs that I should be getting soon, and that should help me restock on a whole bunch of parts that I've been in need of. Earlier in the video, I mentioned Proto and the B&O units, and in regards to those and my SPGP9, which I pulled out, I replaced all the axles with new Proto replacement axles, and some of them were cracked, some of them were beginning to crack. I just thought it was best to buy all new axles, so all these engines should be crack-free and should run much better now. Next up, I got two boxes of train stuff just today, randomly. And the first of it is this large track. I've been told there's an engine and consist that goes with it that I might get at some point. But for now, I've just got the track, so I'll probably keep this around for a while and see what it actually is. And then we have the second box here, which I forgot to mention, I was gifted these. This mostly contains track and rolling stock, along with a few controllers and accessories. We have a Bachman bridge kit. More pieces to it. This is a box of track. Another box of track. I'll move this out of the way now. And in here there's a lot of really rough rolling stock too. We've got this Bachman Santa Fe cattle car. And I'll just say everything in here should be Bachman. All this rolling stock is going to need a good cleanup too. We have this Triangle Pacific car, which is actually kind of interesting. I've never heard of this before, nor seen anything from that railroad before. We have a The Rock Hopper. A Cyanamid Tanker, which I've actually had a few of these in the past. This interesting reefer shell. I don't have a chassis for it, but it is a really interesting looking shell that I'd like to keep if I can find one. A Milwaukee Road 50-foot boxcar. A Union Pacific caboose. This one's in really rough shape. This Burlington Northern gondola. And last of the most interesting things in here is a Bachman light-up bridge. There's also some more track and stuff in here. I'll just grab the box. I'm pretty sure this was stored in a garage, which is why it's all so messy. But it's just track and other random odds and ends in there that aren't the most interesting. So for most of this rolling stock, I'll probably clean it up. Just give it a basic wash off, see if I can clean these up. And whatever I don't want or have no real use for, I'll probably end up giving to some other members of the club I'm part of who can use it more than I can. Before we move on, let me just show you this thing running now. It's still not perfect, but it does actually run relatively smoothly. It's a little bit noisy, but that's about the same level of gear noise you'd get out of an Aristocraft, if not maybe even a little bit quieter, so I'm happy with it. I still need to install a headlight in the thing though, but that's another thing for me to do in the future. 
that will conclude everything new that I've gotten worked on any of that in the past about month or so. It's been a month since I filmed the last episode, but now I've got some other stuff I need to talk about. I've been selling a lot of old trains and all that stuff, and a lot of that's just been going back into getting some newer upgraded stuff, and I've been trying to shrink down my collection a bit because there's far too much. At some point I want to make a full collection video, but that'll be a ways down the road. And I also need to go in and order some parts. Specifically, I need to get speakers and metal wheels, and also more neodymium magnets, and I also want to get some small Digitrax decoders, because I have a lot of engines I want to put DCC in, but all the decoders I have currently, just on hand, are all quite big, and I'd rather just use cheap Digitrax ones in the engines, because they aren't all that nice. And at some point, I want to just get most of my engines DCC'd, and get rid of a lot of the ones that I just don't want to upgrade to DCC. Not the ones that can't be upgraded, but just the ones I don't want. As simple as that. And finally, I just thought I'd give a little upload update. So I've been really busy with stuff. I'm going to try and maintain the same schedule, but if I have some lapses here and there, it's just because I am really busy with college and all of that. So once that calms down a little bit, hopefully I'll get more and more videos up. Probably a little bit higher quality too, maybe, depending on how much time I have. I still have a whole bunch of videos I need to make thumbnails for as of right now as well. But that'll conclude it for this episode of my project bin, so thanks for watching.